I, I don't think we're ever really going to get to that. I can answer questions if you have questions, but <laughs> um, it, <laughs> essentially any physicist who's not already dead, uh, a lot of what they worked on are kind of um, well, either boring and in the sense that there are not any new physics or they are um, speculative in that, that no one's been able to experimentally verify them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know if I say this often in class, um, but in the, there had been no new physics discovered in the last 30 to 40 years. No new fundamental physics, I mean. Who gets all the Nobel Prizes? Uh, well, all right, uh, before I start the class, let me just, for those who are interested, this is a matter of uh, philosophy of science, um, science. The reading I would recommend is Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And I guess the thing that, um, you know, for people who are interested in this, the thing that you should understand is most of the time what happens in science is what's called the normal science. You are not discovering new laws of nature. You are working within the existing paradigm of what we already know. You are filling in the gaps, and it, this is valuable work. This is what most scientists do. People like Einstein, people like uh, Schrodinger, they were lucky enough to be born at the right time to be doing paradigm shifting work. That's the revolution in science. It, and that's not, you know, you should sort of separate them because what we do in regular science and what happens in the scientific revolution is very different. And what I'm telling you is, I guess, in the last 40 years, there haven't been any scientific revolutions. <laughs> that's really what I mean to say. All right, uh, let me just 